So I have a video that I did on the deep dark web back in 2016. It had 1.6 million views and now it's only available for level 1 members. I thought it was a little too graphic for my taste these days so today I am going to discuss this again. Of course this will be the updated version. So what exactly is the deep web? Well, in simple terms, it's a part of the internet that's not indexed by search engines like Google. It's estimated to be thousands of times larger than the surface web, where we spend most of our online time. The deep web contains legitimate sites, databases, and more. But it also has a dark side, known as the dark net. This is a small fraction of the deep web that's intentionally hidden and often associated with illegal activities. It's the place where anonymity reigns, and you can find things like black markets, hacking forums, and worse. This is the primary reason I strongly advise staying away from the dark net. These days, no matter what you do, navigating the internet can be risky. But the dark net, even using dating apps, my advice, just don't do it. But if you are so inclined, proceed with caution. The traps are set. Is the dark web just for criminals? When the dark web is mentioned online, it is usually in tandem with criminal marketplaces and arrests made by law enforcement agencies. Drugs, weapons, and stolen IP and data are all hot businesses on the dark web, with terabytes of information on offer. Traders cash in on stolen credit card data dumps. Initial access points are vulnerable systems credentials, and intellectual property belonging to companies compromised during cyber attacks. However, the dark web has far more uses for organizations and individuals than what a small subset of criminals do under its umbrella. Now the concept of online anonymity predates the dark web. In the early days of the internet you had various tools and technologies that were developed to protect users' privacy. The first anonymous web browser, the Onion Router or Tor browser, which was initially developed by the U.S. Navy in the mid-1990s, it was created with the primary goal of protecting online privacy and ensuring anonymity for users. Tor works by routing internet traffic through a network of volunteer operated servers making it difficult to trace users activities back to their IP addresses. As the Tor network gained popularity it became a haven for privacy conscious individuals including activists and journalists working in repressive regimes but it also attracted criminals who sought to exploit the anonymity it provides. The term dark web started to be associated with hidden websites that were not indexed by search engines and could only be accessed through Tor. One of the most famous early dark web platforms was the Silk Road, an online marketplace launched in 2011 by Ross Albright. The Silk Road facilitated the sale of illegal drugs, fake passports, and other contraband items using Bitcoin for transactions. Now, of course, today you can use all types of cryptocurrency depending on what the vendor is accepting. Albright 
was eventually arrested in 2013 and the site was shut down by the FBI. But what happens is after these marketplaces get shut down, another one pops up right behind it. So what you end up having is shops that open for a short time, then those shops disappear before anyone can shut them down. Following the closure of the Silk Road, the dark web continued to evolve. New marketplaces, forums, and platforms emerged. Some dealing in illegal activities, such as hacking services, stolen data, and even more sophisticated forms of cybercrime. And that really is the concern here with the dark web. How secure is your data, your identity? For that matter, how secure is your data on the surface web? I bet you that online dating apps are more dangerous than the dark web. There are so many people that can tell you how they have gotten catfished and physically robbed while going out on some date they matched with on one of these dating apps. And some people get scammed out of their money. They will put up fake profiles and scam both men and women into believing they've found a match, sending them money, sometimes thousands of dollars. Now over the years, law enforcement agencies have made significant efforts to track down and prosecute individuals operating on the dark web. Several high profile arrests and takedowns of dark web marketplaces have occurred and this has led to an ongoing cat and mouse game between criminals and law enforcement. The dark web remains a shadowy corner of the internet with both legitimate and illicit activities taking place. While it continues to attract cyber criminals, it also serves as a refuge for individuals seeking online privacy in repressive environments or those simply concerned about digital surveillance. The dark web is not inherently illegal and it can have legitimate uses such as providing a platform for whistleblowers, activists, and journalists to communicate securely. But its association with illegal activities and the potential risk it poses to individuals makes it a subject of ongoing concern and scrutiny especially by law enforcement and cybersecurity experts. Now, if you were to go into a city that you've never visited before, you should understand that there are roads everywhere. Some roads lead to places that are good. Some roads lead to places that are bad. But understand that going into bad neighborhoods comes with risks. If you go into a trashy bar, in a bad neighborhood, you can expect to have drug dealers, prostitutes, and weapons in a place like that. You see, it's the same deal with the dark web. If you go into a hacking forum on the dark web, you are among other people who could be black hat hackers or malevolent hackers or people who desire to hack someone. So at that point, you are putting yourself in a place where your data or privacy could be potentially at risk, even when your identity is hidden. For example, you don't want to go into places on the dark web where you could pick up a stalker, someone looking to target someone, either as a data breach or sometimes people will try to terrorize individuals. You guys do know that there are people who sometimes just wake up in the morning and think to themselves, you know what? I feel like hacking and ruining someone's life today. And they will do it, no problem. That's how smart some of these hackers are. There are gangs of hackers who will tap into a company's private data and hold that data for ransom. Or the data gets published to the dark web for anybody to see and use. You have companies like Meta or Facebook that claim to be unhackable. They have white hat hackers come in to hack their systems to look for weaknesses and it's an effective way to keep the system secure, but of course, no system is perfect. There used to be this thing called red rooms 
where people would log in to see torture or worse. But they don't call them that anymore, and they really don't exist anymore. Except the person may be able to find archived footage, maybe. But that's about it. Besides, in today's age, it's easier and cheaper to fake a Red Room where you can use the same actors over and over again rather than actually committing a crime on camera that you can actually get in trouble for when you can just easily fake it because it's all on video. Now, illegal pornography is still a problem on the dark web, which is part of the trafficking ring. And you see on the dark web, it's hard to track the consumers and it's hard to track the sellers. So law enforcement is usually only left with shutting down the traffic that is entering and exiting these hidden marketplaces. Or they shut down the marketplace entirely and keep doing that because a new one will just take its place. So one of the other things I wanted to talk about is when it comes to the deep web or dark web or dark net, people are having arguments about their definition. Let me explain. The surface web or public web is any website or app that does not require you to log in. For example, I can go to a library and use their computer to use Google for a search without having to log into Google, you see. Now, any website or app that I have to log into, for example, Netflix, requires you to have an account and log in whenever you want to access the site. Otherwise, it is private for its members, right? So therefore, Netflix is part of the deep web. So any site or app that you have to log into and use a username and password is part of the deep web. So now you can probably understand why the deep web is much bigger than the surface web. Because most of us are using websites and apps that we have to log into. And a few other sites that may be public. Now the dark web is part of the deep web. But in order to access the dark web, you need an onion router or a Tor browser to access sites that use .onion. For example, Facebook has a .onion site because it is blocked in certain countries and so people can still access it by using a Tor browser, you see? Which is a great way to fight censorship when you think about it. At the same time, criminals use .onion. And that is actually what is called the dark net because it is a network of illegal activity that operates on the dark web, you see? So your goal is really to stay away from the dark networks that operate on the dark web. The dark web itself is fine. It's the dark communities that exist there, which is what you don't want to get caught up into. The same rules you would apply to the streets. Trust no one. With that said, there are some simple steps you can take when venturing into the dark web. When using a Tor browser, make sure your settings are correct and JavaScript is off. Unless you plan to chat, then it has to be turned on. And use a VPN. And that should work well. I would make sure the machine you're using doesn't have any personal data on it. Use strong, unique passwords. Enable two-factor authentication. Keep your software and antivirus up to date. Educate yourself about online threats and the scams that exist currently because they get updated. Criminals are very clever. Stick to reputable websites and protect your personal information. Stay away from dark networks. As a law-abiding citizen, there should be no need for you to browse an onion site that offers anything illegal. Does that make sense? I plan on taking us through some areas of the dark web in the future for information you can't get anywhere else, which is coming soon. Remember, the internet is a vast and exciting place, but it's essential to navigate it wisely. The dark net 
may hold curiosity, but it's not worth the risk it poses. Instead, let's focus on making the most of the surface, deep and dark webs, and ensuring our online experiences are safe and enjoyable there. That's all for now, and there is more to come very soon. Be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com to become a Level 1 member for exclusive content. Check out the Woodward TV store for new merch. You can follow me on Instagram at J-A-E Woodward. Everyone have a great day. And if you so choose to venture into the unknown, call the dark web. Stay awake, stay aware, stay safe. And I'll talk to you all soon.